Hey guys, I have been asked a couple times to make a video explaining how to make your own build, but I always replied that I don't feel qualified for that because I know many people have an opinion that most of my builds are bad. Despite having made over 500 builds, probably close to 700 builds over the last 7 years, I have a certain vision of how I want to play and I'm pretty stubborn. I mean, I think it was a year ago when I was st still using free life flash for my builds because I always hated using flash to gain buffs. Difficulty and speed of the game has increased quite a lot in the recent years and it feels like we are being forced to play faster with leagues like Delirium, but they are also more dangerous, to a point where building defense sometimes feels meaningless because there will always be something that can randomly one-shot your character without any warning. Usually these things happen at the start of the league and get snapped near the end of the league when most people taking a break from Path of Exile, so sometimes it is hard to tell if the game overall is hard or not. I feel like every new league there are fewer and fewer viable meme builds. When I say meme build, I, I just mean some quirky build or just end of meta build, which can often be just as fun to play as any other build. So after thinking a bit more, I decided to do a video about this and uh, to use my last build as an example. I haven't done a build guide video on this, but uh, I still have recorded clips, so may as well use it. The way I see it, there are two kind of builds. Those who get speed, damage and plow through enemies before they hit you, meaning those builds usually have no survival ability and cannot do endgame content. And the second type of builds, let's just say all the other builds. There are also third kind of builds where you get insane damage, almost never die, almost never get hit, you are cruising through maps like hot knife through butter. For those kind of builds, you should probably ask metal. So in this video I'm gonna talk about second type of builds. To keep things simple, when making a build you need two things, damage and defense. Speed to me is more of a quality thing rather than necessity. Damage and defense can be split into more layers of complexity. So first, when designing a build, typically I decide what unique aspect I want to use for a build. Maybe a specific unique item like let's say face breaker gloves, maybe certain skill, maybe build changing passive node. After that is decided, then I start thinking of what I want to be able to do with that build. Since I don't like just farming, I usually try to make a build that uh, could do both, farming and doing endgame or near endgame content. Near endgame content being tier 16 guardian maps, conquerors and uh, things like that, while endgame content being all main bosses like Shaper, Uber, Elder, Cirrus. Since I'm trying to push uh, builds to at least tier 16 maps, I need both damage and defense, so the rule for leveling faster isn't always speed or damage, because if you're dead, you do no damage and lose XP. So slower builds with more chance of surviving can often be faster at reaching endgame. Since glass cannons usually falls into fast type of builds and in general not having decent defense is going to make it feel really bad, so let's start with uh, how to plan for defense. Note that I still haven't mentioned ascendancy classes, that is because it's not a priority, it comes after you decide on other things. For defenses, you always want to build a couple layers of them, basically you are trying to become an onion. Of course, best defense is to not get hit, which comes from knowing the game and having skills to avoid damage, which is much much harder these days uh, since there are billions of things happening on the screen and it is very hard to filter out all that information. I have short video series showing what it is like playing with just 1 HP, like truly 1 HP, how many things uh, you cannot actually avoid in the game. I will have a link in the description. Next best defense layer is definitely block. If you are going to build for block, you will have only a few options, typically either playing with staff, shield or dual wield. It is also possible to play with both block or any weapon and getting block through other means like bone offering skills uh, while having passive that allows offerings to affect you. But I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long going over every possibility, so let's just keep it as simple as possible. Block is good not only because you take no damage when blocking, but you also have extra things happening when you block, like shield which recovers life, energy shield or mana when you block. You can always check wiki for more detailed explanation. Block caps a 75% chance which can be increased in couple ways. The block chance is calculated after evasion and dodge, so let's talk about evasion and dodge. Personally, I don't really value evasion because you can just blind enemies to make them miss more often and on top of that evasion is pretty complicated topic and it is always related to enemy's accuracy so let's just go to dodge. 
Dulch can be for attacks and spells and is often used for builds uh, focusing on the right side of the passive skill tree because acrobatics and phase acrobatics nodes which give uh, dodge are located on the very right side of the passive skill tree. Just a quick note, acrobatics will lower your block chance, armor and energy shield. So you will almost never want to combine block and dodge or full energy shield and dodge. There are many ways of increasing dodge and dodge by the way is a fixed percentage not related to enemy accuracy. Dodge isn't as good as block because it doesn't have any special mechanics that gets uh, triggered with dodge like uh, block has. Dodge often feels let's say invisible because you never know when it works. Dodge is also kept at 75% and it can be increased with other items and passives. Next defense layer is probably damage mitigation which is uh, used for true tanks. In my book tank is something that gets hit but takes little damage unlike block or dodge which is more of a don't get hit kind of build. When building a tank you are going to need mitigation for all damage types. Physical, elemental, hairs. Physical mitigation is typically armor uh, can only mitigate up to 10% of its value from single hit. So armor is often weak defense against big hits. There is also percentage physical damage uh, mitigation which can be attained from things like endurance charges. It is worth noting that armor only mitigates uh, physical damage from hits only. So it will not mitigate the damage from damage over time like bleed. Also armor is one of the <laughs> longest lasting misunderstanding so I don't want to go too deep into it. Just remember 10% of armor for single hit mitigation. Unlike evasion armor mitigates physical damage from spells as well. Mitigating elemental damage mostly comes from resistances and this is one of the first things we say to newer players, cap your resistances as soon as possible. It is extremely important and you will often want to overcap it like uh, having it uh, in reserve in case enemies debuff you to lower your resistances. Resistances caps at 75% like many other things but there are many ways to increase it. Hair's resistance is a bit different in terms of importance but if you are building a tank you will want hair's resistance as high as possible. Note that uh, with hair's inoculation you get 100% hair's resistance making you immune to hair's damage. And then there are ways to get generic mitigation. In example, enemies course with and feeble course will deal less damage. All damage. Another quick example is uh, you take less damage from blinded enemies. There are other conditional things like that. It is important to have percentage physical mitigation, capped resistances, except for hair's resistance, and then some sort of generic mitigation like I just mentioned. And then mix uh, that with block or dodge. You don't always need block or dodge in every single build. And of course let's not forget about the most basic defensive layer, life. Typically I try to get at least 170% increased life from the passive skill tree unless it is a hybrid life energy shield or life mana build or a build that stacks a bunch of strength which naturally gives you a lot of flat life. Energy shield builds typically get a higher percentage of increased ES when life builds get life but since I was never a fan of it I better not give you any more advice about energy shield. There are our mechanics used for defensive layers like leech, life recovery on hit, regeneration, recovery life on block, guard skills like steel skin, molten shell, etc. This is what I mean by becoming an onion. You want to coat yourself in multiple defensive layers to make enemies cry when they try to peel you. I think building good defense is more complicated than building damage. Personally for me it is also less interesting but it is more important to be able to survive in the first place. Take it from a player who made countless builds that looked good on paper but felt bad in practice because I kept dying too often. Now let's talk about building for damage. Damage kind of has three layers, increase damage you do, more damage you do and enemies take increase slash more damage. You always want to mix uh, these three and uh, find the balance, too much of one and you will get diminishing returns meaning that it would be more efficient to build other damage types. For example if you have 0% increased damage and 100% more damage it is basically the same as having just 100% increased damage. It is very important to distinguish words in Path of Exile, word increased is additive while more is multiplicative. 50% more is always going to be 50% more damage output. But getting another 50% increased damage may only be couple percentages of overall increased damage output. Therefore getting more damage is harder. Well maybe not so much these days. All support gems are now more multipliers while most of the passive nodes and uh, damage mods on items are increased damage. I say most. Enemies take increased damage comes from all kind of debuffs like uh, shock, courses, elemental equilibrium etc. 
This was just a generic information for scaling damage. You still need to decide how you're going to be building for damage. Best thing is, is it crit or non crit build? Crit builds almost always end up having more damage, except for damage over time builds. However, crit builds tend to be a bit more expensive and require more passive points. Non crit builds usually are for damage over time builds like bleed, ignite, poison, and elemental damage over time builds like scorching ray or vortex that often take elemental overload just to get more elemental damage multiplier. There are many other ways of getting damage like flask, gain physical damage as extra elemental damage, non hears damage as extra hears damage, penetration, exposure, debuffs, or just shouting louder. So you're gonna have to decide that and then we go into ascendancy choices. Newer players often ask which ascendancy class is the best for new player, but unlike other games Path of Exile has more freedom when it comes to classes, so you can make almost any class work for any kind of build. You can take Saboteur and use it for attack build, or you can use a champion or juggernaut and play it as a summoner. It really depends on how you want to play. That is why deciding what class you want to play comes after you have decided other things. You try to match class to your chosen defensive and damage layers. It really is that simple. You can always make it more complicated if you are doing some non-conventional build. What is left for you is to just level the build and adjust things as you go, based on what items you are able to acquire. So, let me use my Infernal Blow Dual Nebulok Slayer as an example. First thing, I decided what unique aspect I am going to use, in this case Nebulok Mace, which requires endurance charges, so first off my defense layer is already clear, I will need to be able to generate and maintain endurance charges. Next I also see that I can get a lot of armor at the same time and it gives yes resistance per endurance charge and reduced elemental damage taken from hits per endurance charge. Emphasis on hits. So just by using these maces I will be almost forced to get good defense layers without even trying. However this mace also has a drawback. 200 fire damage taken per second per endurance charge if you have been hit recently. By the way, recently always means 4 seconds. On top of that, I am using two of these maces, so I would be taking 400 fire damage per second per endurance charge. And I want more endurance charges to get more defensive benefits. So I end up with 6 endurance charges, which means 2400 fire damage per second. Good thing is, this damage is mitigated by fire resistance, but not reduced elemental damage taken per endurance charge from this maze. Because this damage is uh, damage over time and does not hit, so you cannot block it or dodge it. So I also need a way of regenerating that life. Regen and Leech is what I planned on using. The Wise Oak Flask was another option, but it was hard to triple balance resistances to benefit from reduced elemental damage taken during its effect. Since defense layers are decided, let's move to damage. We see that Maze has large amount of physical damage as extra fire damage mod. So with uh, two of them, I will be getting up to 80% of physical damage as extra fire. It is clear that it would be better to convert all damage into fire to benefit from uh, things like fire penetration. So I need 100% physical damage converted to fire. So I look for a skill that converts it and combine it with other conversion methods. I picked Infernal Blow skill since it is uh, satisfying to play with it and it has conversion. To get the rest of conversion I have couple options, I can take Avatar of Fire, Passive Skill Tree, or from other items, or take the Chieftain Ascendancy class. Since I have done plenty of Chieftains with full conversion into Fire, I wanted another option. I would want to go crit build, but Neblock weapons have bad base critical strike chance. So another option is to either be Assassin, Scion Assassin or Slayer. Since I will need maximum endurance charges, I cannot really be assassin or else I would have to travel all the way to the left side of the passive skill tree and waste a lot of points. Cyan would be an option, but Slayer has something interesting, masterful form, which basically means that getting maximum frenzy charges increases your maximum endurance charges as well. Which means I wouldn't need to go to the left side of the passive skill tree. And Slayer has overwhelming node which sets base critical strike chance for weapon to 7.5%. So I can build crit and get more maximum frenzy charges which also means more damage. Also frenzy charges are located near the shadow ranger and duelist area of the passive skill tree. I should also mention that the way I'm generating frenzy charges is with redeemer's body armor which has 10% chance to gain frenzy charge on hit. The way I'm generating Enduring Charges is with the Enduring Cry. To make it smoother I picked Instant Warcry node and picked some cluster jewels for Warcrys. 
By the way, to avoid traveling to Avatar of Fire, which is uh, in the far top left corner, I picked Soft Blood Amulet, which is surprisingly cheap this league. It often is pretty expensive, but this league is cheap. I could have also used Glass of Conversion or Avatar of Fire for Anger's Aura. My concern making this build was that Infernal Blow is not that good for single target and I want to pick uh, a lot of things on the passive tree, so I had to sacrifice something. I managed to push my damage close to 2 million DPS versus Cirrus, but it's kind of conditional. But that also means loss in defense. I was able to pick some other defensive nodes on the tree, but I lacked points to get even more AoE, more life, fortify nodes, and I had some issues with uh, resistances. The build ended up performing alright in red tier maps, but was too inconsistent and unreliable against tougher opponents because I would need to swap gems, which I hate, or try to tank things that I cannot really tank like damage over time. Having only 5.5 thousand life is nearly not enough, even if you have armor, physical mitigation, fortify, elemental mitigation, region and leech. But my goal was to just play around with Slayer and Neblock interaction. I will have a PUB import code in video description if you want to check the rest of the items and skills of this build. I hope this video helps players understand how to approach making your own build. Do remember that Path of Exile is one of the most complex games, but it is pretty rewarding when you figure out some cool interaction and make it work. Even if that build doesn't perform as well as other builds, even if other players don't understand why would you use such a weird build, play what interests you. That is my rule for having fun. If you got any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below, and if you feel like this video is useful, be sure to share it with others. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.